Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got two replays for you in the German tier 10 tank destroyer, the Grilla 15. Happy New Year everyone. This is the first video of 2023 and yep we're in the Grilla 15 and we've got two pretty damn nice games for you in this tank and we got, it. We got through it. We got through having an upload on every single day of December, except for the first three for which I was ill. And I end December being ill. Woo! That's the way it is. That's the way the cookie crumbles, right? But yeah, so we managed to get through all that. We've actually got one video a day for the whole of the rest of that December period. We managed to do it, so thank God we managed to get through it. Not going to be able to keep that up, though, because that's quite a task to be able to upload every single day like that by just having to play the game, get the replays for the videos, then actually make the videos, get it all loaded, all that sort of stuff. The time to make that is, is impossible with day-to-day -day life. Whereas, you know, we can do it for one month. We can stretch to do it for one month. But thank God we got through to the end of it and we had some pretty good games to throw in there. I think the best one I had was that Cobra T54 replay, the 10K, that was mad. If you haven't checked out, that was literally yesterday's video. And yeah, we're in the Grilla 15. One that you're gonna see is get very close to that target again. And I always loved the Grilla 15. Always have. Right? It's just... The gun is fantastic. Always has been. Because it's one of those that you aim the shot in, the shot flies true, flies straight in and pens. Most of the time, pretty much, this tank will just hit exactly where you want. On the dime. On the nose. It hits where you want every... Well, most of the time. I say not every single time because that would be perfect RNG. But even in the pre 6.0 world where, you know, the accuracy wasn't quite at the stage as we are at now, it was still dirtily accurate and hit most of its shots, which was a wonderful thing, really, for this tank. Now, it has had, obviously, competitors come out. I mean, like the 2 8 version 5 and the Turan, which is the direct competitor of the Gorilla 15, the Turan is, you know, a, a similar sort of thing. Similar sort of tank, right? It's got the big gun, it's got pretty decent mobility, and it's got camo. Whereas this tank does have camo, but not what you want from it, really. It could be better, it could be more like the Turan's camo. But it's still passable, you can still make the most of it. Especially with the camo net the way it is these days as well now. And, you know, you can put the crew skills and stuff like that on it, and you'll make it really great. So... The Turan is obviously far better than this tank, but that doesn't necessarily make this tank bad. This tank is really nice. You could just do with maybe one or two things, just making it that little bit better in regards of, yeah, stuff like camo and that. But I, I've always really enjoyed this tank. It's just an absolutely fabulous tank, and it hits hard. The, let's say the only downside to it is the one that... The only downside to it to me, the only thing that I have always thought was weird, that they basically brought in every other tank destroyer, with 850, especially ones that were on PC with 750, they brought them in and brought them at 850, or like the Chinese WZ113 GFT, they changed it to 850, but this tank always, they were just like, nah, we'll leave it at 750, so it just sort of lags behind them a bit in that slappage ability, so if, if anything, to be honest, the only thing I'd really want them to change is, is that is that 850 Alpha, bring it to 850 Alpha or nerf everything down to 750, you know, either way. But yeah, I really like the tank. So, in terms of a crew on the Gorilla 15, I do run Born Leader, Rapid Reload, Six Sense, Situational Awareness, Steady Aim, Run and Gun, Camouflage Expertise, Silent Driving, Muffled Shot. Making the most of my camo with the camo expertise, Muffled Shot, and Silent Driving. Want to make sure that my tank is 55% better concealed on the move with Silent Driving. 10% better with the camo and just have that higher chance of, you know, not getting spotted after firing, especially when you're in stealthy positions with the muffled shot. But I also add in the run and gun for the ability to hit shots a little bit easier on the move. Like, because you'll see that I do do a lot of shooting on the move, like you just saw with the AE phase one there. And they're 10% more accurate because while this tank is also filteredly accurate, 10% more accuracy is always nice, right? And that's always what you want to run. In terms of equipment, I run Rama, Camo Net, and Optics. Optics to spot for myself. Camo Net to make my view range absolutely dirty. Well, not my view range dirty. My camo absolutely dirty with a Camo Net. And my view range to be able to spot for myself, which is definitely what I want. So, yeah, the Grilla 15 on a map that is not really suitable for it, to be fair. And that is Himmelsdorf. So far, we've managed 
Nearly 6,000 damage, and there's only one tank left, and that is the artillery. For which, it looks like we're not going to get anywhere near, because the Leopard one is farming it. As you can see, this is obviously before ribbons and the art changes as naturally. It's only got 500 hit points. This replay from a little while ago. As much as I love the Griller, it's one that, for some reason, I just never seem to take out that often. I just sort of go, yeah, I could take it out, but ah, I'll play something else. But... It's like every single time I play it, I really enjoy it, you know, it's one of those tanks. Ace Tanker, the High Caliber Sniper, and 1517 base XP for the Gorilla 15 there. Really nice game for it, especially on a map that's not suit, well, not particularly suitable for it in Himmelsdorf. You know, it's not one that you want to be playing your lightly armored TDs on. But because it has that high alpha slapping gun, you can play that peekaboom and that, what you saw us do it perfectly in that replay, to be fair. Just that peekaboom tactic where you sort of drive onto a corner, poke round, go slap, and then pull back round and stay safe, right? That's what this tank can do. And we're on to the second replay, and we're on Prokhorovka. Now, Prok is a good map for it. I looked at this matchmaking and went, well, it's mostly tier 10. Oh, this is a good way to start the, mat the match, by the way. Goodbye, Mr. 1390. Amorak, off with his head. Goodbye. Straight away, 1,200 damage with the first shot. It's pretty good DPM if you hit for 1,200 every time, isn't it? That'd be nice. And, yeah, so I looked at the matchmaking, and there's no artillery. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to play pretty aggressively, and we're going to go to the mid-ridge. And it's a very risky thing to do with a griller, because we have no armor. But we have the kind of camo, which means that if they've got no one spotting, which, with their light tank now dead... They don't really have anyone spotting, unless it's something like the E5 that is poking up on the ridge line on our left. I could pop up on this ridge line and not stay, you know, not get spotted. That'd be quite nice, and I could do it. And I could play aggressively. You do have to measure whether you play aggressively on this ridge here with a tank like the Griller, because also a good spot for the Griller would be somewhere like D1, where you can see the TD currently sitting, because I could get shots at people like the E5 quite easily, and I could get shots down the one too as well. But right now, we've got no one spotting the 1-2 as it is. I don't have the best view range in the world, so I'm not really going to spot that much down there. And I'm just like, please, D49, come spot for your Gorilla Overlord so I can slap. Thankfully, the E100 gets spotted up from earlier, and we slap a nice shot into his side, set him on fire, and finish him off. It's just the, the alpha on the gun. And like I say, the, the fact that this gun aims in so fast and hits so hard is so nice. It's just a really nice gun to use. It's like, it's almost like a medium tank, to be honest, a Gorilla 15 with a big gun. And it's just so good to play with. Like I say, it's just it's weird, isn't it? Because it's, it's, like, it's really nice, but you think about it and go, well, there is the Tyrann I could play. And that thing's dirty. But the Tyrann doesn't have gun depression like the Gorilla 15 and couldn't play this position that you see in here. And thankfully, that T-49 is actually going down the 1-2 now to spot. And he ends up lighting up this Jagdpanzer that's just sat at the back randomly. And he actually ends up spotting the STRV 103B as well. So we get a nice shot into the lower plate of the Jagdpanzer. Just aiming ahead of the STRV 103B. I was kind of hoping to track him. And that's exactly what happens. I know that I can pen that guy because I've got a 15 centimeter gun. So I can never match it. But now targets are starting to get lit up everywhere. We've got this shot at the ST1. We managed to find the shot straight through his turret side. And that's the thing. Because as much as the... The Turan is absolutely disgusting. That gun loves, just like on the 268 version 5, that gun loves to troll you so much. The gun misses a hell of a lot, but obviously when it hits, it slaps, and it's pretty consistent at doing it. Whereas this tank, for me, the gun pretty much never misses. So I'm always consistently relying, or, you know, feeling that this gun is reliable. If I aim it into a spot, it's going to hit that spot. Unlike the Turan, which will hit the floor at times, or like the Tuesday version 5, with a similar gun. But like I say, I feel like, it, you know, I get the shot aimed in. It, it's flying in in this tank. So as you can see so far, we're up to 6.6k damage with 1,000 assistance. I actually kind of wanted to track the Jagdpanzer there, but unfortunately it only did track damage with, rather than taking the tracks off. Um, we're just keeping our eye on this E5, because I want to slap a shot into his side, get him down to a one shot. He ends up turning to look at us, and I sort of went, you know what, I can take a hit from this guy. I've got, I've still full hit points, so I'm going to take the risk to drop his HP down. If he hits me, he hits me, but thankfully he didn't. Now the Death Star gets unspotted, and it's like, wait, 
that shot didn't hit the Death Star. I mean, I know he got unspotted just as we fired, so it's quite easily that he could have just moved a little bit further away from where we wanted it to. And then a leopard gets spot up, uh, spotted up, and it's like, yeah, okay, well, let me just finish off the leopard. The like the T forty nine is gonna have so so much assistance from this spotting run. We we are getting so much it's just target rich environment. And like I say, this griller, it doesn't let you down with this gun. This is the Mr. All Reliable. Right? It is all reliable. It just hits all the shots. And so far we're up to eight point seven K damage with a thousand assistance. And now the enemy team is hemmed in in that bottom corner or on the hill. A 268 version 5 that's just been sat on the hill at the back gets spotted up. So we get a nice shot slapped through his side there. Which puts us on 9.5k damage with the Leopard PTA there as well. I'm looking at this going, oh my god I could get 10k. But unfortunately they just get to the other side of the ridge. I'm like, right, okay, I, I just need one more shot for 10k. So we're going to get over here to get a shot at these guys. The PTA is going. I'm thinking, right, I'll pop a shot at where he was aiming or where he was running. Unfortunately, the shell doesn't quite go in. So I'm like, right, okay, we'll wait for the reload and we'll go over and pop a shot into this 268 version 5. Just as he, just as we're about to fire, he ends up taking a big hit, which knocks him down to only 68 hit points. And I'm still looking at this going, oh my god, 10k's in sight. I can go get 10k. So I'm just, I know that if I get a shot into the... IS-7, I'll get 10k. If I get shot into the Leopard, I'll get 10k. So I'm just watching it, because the Leopard keeps exposing himself, and I'm watching it going, is he going to do it? Then the IS-7 drives out, I'm like, yes, no! The E-4 behind me manages to snap the shot into him. Then I've got the PTA on 1,000, so I'm like, I can still get it. Oh, no, he takes a big hit. And we finish him off for 311, and we don't crest 10,000 damage in this game. We end up getting 9 point, nearly 9.9k damage with 2.6k assistance. The Ace Tanker, the high caliber, 1873 base XP. A really great game for the Grilla 15. And a very typical ending there with the so close but yet so far for the 10k. For me, that always seems to be the case when I'm in World War II. As opposed to what happened in the Cobra 254 replay. I get to the point where I'm like, I just need one more shot. And then every time I just get that shot into fire at someone, they die. Is what it is. But great replay to start the year. Thank you very much everyone for watching me over the last year. And before on that. I'll see you all next time.